Hi, I'm Mark, and this is Let's Vibe, the channel all about crystals and our feelings. Now, today I wanted to talk about a stone that is particularly potent when it comes to feelings and bringing emotions to the surface. And that stone is black obsidian. So I've got a black obsidian sphere, as you can see. And obsidian, uh, you may already know, but obsidian is volcanic glass, meaning it is formed from lava that um, came to the surface and cooled very quickly. And because the lava cooled so quickly, it formed a glass, meaning there's no crystal structure. So obsidian, just like regular glass, does not have any kind of crystal structure. It's amorphous. Um, opal is also an amorphous crystal, no structure. But this is definitely not your average piece of glass. Um, obsidian is very, very powerful. And before I get into the details of this stone, I want to say that if you are drawn to obsidian, if you like obsidian, if you'd like to have a piece of your own and work with it, please make sure <laughs> that you have some kind of emotional support system in place. Um, a therapist, a mentor, a really trusted friend, someone you can uh, talk to if you need to. Why? Because <laughs> this stone will bring stuff to the surface like no other. Obsidian is, first of all, it's very, very protective, um, very protective against harmful energies, low vibrations. It dispels negative energies. But at the same time, obsidian brings up to the surface things that we would most likely consider negative. Um, things hiding in the shadows, hiding in the corners of our mind. Obsidian is like this very powerful opening of <laughs> all doorways within you. And whatever is waiting to come out will come out. And and this stone, it, it, it's the perfect stone for such a thing because not only is it protective, but obsidian is very, very grounding, very deep earth, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> very deep grounding that goes way down into the earth. Um, it's a real earth-based kind of grounding, um, like center of the earth. And... So that deep grounding provides the stability and the space to do the processing that this, that this stone requires <laughs> or that it asks of you. Um, of course, you can focus on something specific if you know that, if you know of something that needs to come up you know, if you have a, an idea of, of something that needs to be processed, you can focus on that. But it can also, you know, you don't have to know consciously for, for this thing to work. Like, whether you're aware of stuff or not, I keep laughing, but it's really, <laughs> it's not funny in the moment. And I'll explain, but... This will bring stuff to the surface, whether you're aware of it being there or not. And I'm laughing my way through this because 
I've personally been going through some challenges and major um, processing of stuff. Uh, the last couple months have been very interesting. A uh, lot of up and down, ups and downs. It's been it's been a strange month. Uh, last month, August especially, was quite strange in that I ex I was experiencing on one level I was experiencing some stability and and calm and everything was okay, but on a whole nother level, or perhaps I should say like on an inner level on a deeper level, it felt like so many things were, were shifting and um, things were being upset and, and unsettled. And I, I had so many days in the past month or two where I felt like I didn't know where I where I was going, where I where I was headed. I felt like I didn't know what I was doing really. I just felt kind of lost in a way, cloudy. And there was a heck of a lot of anxiety and fear coming to the surface as well and found myself having to do some pretty major processing of old wounds, old traumas, old programs that have been running in the back of my mind in my subconscious for my whole life. And it's been tumultuous and I'm still kind of in the middle of it, but in the last week or so, I picked up obsidian and I felt like I just felt like I needed a powerful stone and I knew obsidian was that powerful stone um, and yeah it um, you know obsidian can feel very protective and grounding and that's that's good. <laughs> But if you're gonna work with it, you gotta be sure, or you gotta make sure that if and when an emotional thing comes up, whether it's a memory, an old, you know, an old program, a mental program, um, to use a psychological term, a complex, <laughs> these are, powerful things and so many times I've I've been naive and I've approached my stones and I'm like oh I want to work on my inner child and I, I want to do some self-healing and yeah it happens but it's not pretty <laughs> and so I get what I ask for but it's like okay I I should be a little more, a little more cautious next time because you get what you ask for with these stones, but sometimes you really just, you don't know. You know, you don't know what's hiding underneath the surface all the time. And it can be a surprise. And as I was reading up on, you know, Judy Hall's official description of of black obsidian um one thing that really caught my attention was she describes obsidian as not just bringing old feelings and and old painful stuff to the surface but also she describes obsidian as amplifying those old hurts so that you feel it in full, which you can then, you know, after feeling it in full, re-experiencing it, then you can release it 
And I have found that to be true over and over and over. Releasing old hurts, releasing trauma, painful memories, painful uh, self-destructive programming. You know, it sounds great. Yes, I want to release it. I want to let it all go, get rid of it. But what we often aren't aware of, what we don't expect is that in order to get to that point of releasing, you have to feel it all. <laughs> and it sounds, you know, it might sound kind of cruel, like why, why would we have to re-experience these painful things? And honestly, I don't have <laughs> all the answers to that question, but just from my experiences, my own experiences of healing and releasing. Even though it can be so painful to feel whatever past trauma you had, to feel it in full, even though that can really hurt, being able to feel it, every last bit of it, is what allows you to then let it go. When you're not able to feel it, when you're keeping yourself from experiencing the pain of some distant memory or, or trauma, by keeping yourself from feeling it, you keep yourself from releasing it. Um, and yeah, I, I just... I've, I've found that to be true time and time again. So obsidian is the stone for that whole process. And I, I wouldn't say it like amplifies the bad feelings or the painful feelings to the point of being, you know, completely overwhelming. It's not quite like that. I think it, it, it's more like obsidian brings the feelings back full force. And, and then, you know, whatever negativity is released, obsidian can absorb that. So because, um, excuse me, so, <laughs> uh, when you're working with obsidian, you want to make sure that it is cleansed, that um, you want to make sure you're keeping the stone clean because it absorbs, it doesn't just repel negative energies, it absorbs uh, harmful energies as well. And so you want to make sure you're keeping it cleansed. And um, one way is with water, you can hold it under running water. You know, obsidian, it's glass, so it's, it's safe underwater. Another way is just in sunlight or moonlight or with fire. <laughs> um, candlelight uh, can cleanse stones like obsidian. Or smoke, like uh, incense smoke, some kind of, any kind of sacred smoke. make sure that it's cleansed or else if you don't keep it clean, it can start to like, in a way it can kind of like backfire and start throwing out those energies that it absorbed or it just shuts down. <laughs> um, so this is, um, uh, this is a very, very powerful stone. Um, one thing I forgot to mention um, in regards to the fact that there's no crystal structure. The fact that there's no crystal structure means that this stone can process and transmit or channel energy in huge quantities and it can do it very fast. 
because it's it's almost like a fluid it's it's you know there's no structure to slow anything down and so energy can pass through obsidian very quickly and very powerfully that's another reason why you want to be careful if you happen to um, buy obsidian and feel that you want to use it. Um, opal is very similar because opal, as I mentioned, is amorphous as well. There's no crystal structure. So, you know, some crystal, there are plenty of crystals that are very safe for beginners. Um, and you don't have to be too concerned about traumatic things coming to the surface. But obsidian is not really one of those. Um, <laughs> now there are other, there are many types of obsidian. Some of them are much gentler, much easier to work with, not so harsh. Um, but I just wanted to focus on black obsidian today because um, the other types of obsidian have different energies, different purposes. Um, obsidian, you, you may be familiar with, you know, obsidian is often used for scrying, which is like gazing into the stone, um, receiving psychic messages by gazing into um, an obsidian mirror or an obsidian sphere. So that is one other use. It's not solely for processing painful emotions. Um, and yeah, this really is for anyone who's working with crystals, you know, even though this is a more serious kind of stone, it is, I would say it's, it's a must have if if you're going to work with crystals because it really is just you know in spite of in spite of the experience of feeling some painful things um all in all it's it's a beautiful stone that can facilitate very deep healing it can really get to the root of things that are bothering you it gets to the root of problems, the roots of mental and emotional dis-ease. And it is a powerful, powerful healing stone. So I was thinking about songs <laughs> as usual. And, you know, since this is a black stone and it's a stone that deals with serious stuff, <laughs> Um, it made me think of Evanescence, <laughs> one of my favorite bands. And I was drawn to the song Going Under by Evanescence. Going Under is the first song on their first album, Fallen. And it's one of my favorite songs. Um, but I like, I think that song fits Black Obsidian well, not just because it's a darker, heavier song, but because she sings Amy Lee, uh, the lead singer, she sings about going under. And the song, I mean, her songs are very poetic, but the way that I interpret the song, it, it's kind of like she's singing about processing old things or processing painful things going under, going down into the depths and bringing things up to the surface that need to be brought up. I am losing my light. <laughs> so I will include a link down below to Going Under by Evanescence. And as always, please uh, leave a question or comment down below. I would love to hear from you. And once again, thank you so much for vibing with me.